and welcome to Seahawks Scouting. My name is Brandon. I do appreciate you as ever for tuning on in. Today we're going to be taking a look at the second diamond in that undrafted rookie free agent class that the Seattle Seahawks were successfully able to pilfer from the rest of the league. And that would be the highly productive kid out of South Dakota State, Cade Johnson. Now the first thing that we need to understand with Cade when we're looking at him is that he is in many respects diametrically the opposite type of receiver to the one that we just previously looked at to Marion Terry, also a part of this undrafted rookie free agent crop. He's just not the freak show that to Marion is. He's not as big. He's not as tall. He's not as long. He's not as fast. He doesn't jump as high. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have his own unique traits that he brings to the table. It's just a little bit of a different kind of cat. And it's a little bit like going from having the five-star all expenses paid vacation in paradise to a uh, Weekend cabin in Yellowstone. You know, Yellowstone's nice. It's hard to beat the five-star experience. But again, it's not to say that this kid doesn't have a lot that he brings to the table. And the thing that jumps out right out the gate with me and him is the fact that this is the definition of an absolute self-made player. This is a guy that had to walk on at South Dakota State, had to redshirt his freshman year, finally got his first year only 300 yards receiving, but then absolutely exploded his sophomore campaign to the tune of 1,300 yards receiving and a school record 17 touchdown receptions. He followed this up with a very solid junior campaign of 1,200 yards and seemed very well on his way to being a drafted wide receiver. But then, of course, the pandemic hit. And South Dakota State decided to be one of those college programs last year that just completely shut it down. This put Cade in a bit of a precarious situation. He had a choice to make. On one hand, he could enter into the tra transfer portal, head to a top 25 program, ball out his final senior year, and then probably get drafted. Probably even get drafted up in the fourth, fifth round range of things. Instead, he went the other route, took the risk, thought maybe he could get drafted into this draft, not have to wait a year down the line. Well, a little bit of his loss is the Seahawks' gain in this situation. And so they're able to pull a player who probably would have been drafted in any other normal year, but because of this outlier-type season, they're able to get tremendous value here. And when it comes to Cade, he is quintessentially exactly everything you need in the modern slot wide receiver. Quick enough, fast enough, absolutely great off the line of scrimmage in his releases. He's different from Dwayne Eskridge in that both of them are very good in their releases and getting open quick. He does it a little bit more with technique, whereas Eskridge does it a little bit more with a twitchiness to his game. But he does get open and get open fast. He's got a great feel out in coverage. He can sit down in zones. He can run option routes where he can read a, a defender's leverage on where he needs to sit down appropriately. If you need him to do any of the slot stuff as far as bubble screen goes, he could absolutely do that as well. He's very good at transitioning from being a receiver to a runner very quickly. He runs with enough tenaciousness that he's going to get you a couple extra yards when there might only seem to be one or two. He'll get you three or four or five. He can also do all of the end around stuff that's quickly becoming a staple in the NFL in every offensive playbook. It seems like every team now is going to run three, four, five end arounds a game. This guy can do that as well. So there's nothing you can't have him do in the slot that you absolutely need is necessary. He's maybe not as much of a yak guy, but there's enough elements to his game, solid hands, good route running, great release, that gets me excited about him. So let's dive on into the tape of Kay Johnson and see what he has to offer our Seattle Seahawks, not just necessarily in the long term, but even into this next upcoming season. All right, folks, you know how I like to do it. I want to get you hyped up first. I want to get you excited. So first things first, we're going to dive into a little bit of his uh, highlight package here. And we're going to look over a little bit of Senior Bowl tape, maybe a little bit of game film. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Bed Bath Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if I have enough time. I don't know if I have enough time. But we're going to start out the gate here with that highlight package. And what you're going to notice about Kay Johnson here is that he is always going to be operating in the slot in all of these highlight cut-ups that we are going to see. Nothing wrong with that. Just again, as a reminder, he is a slot-only type cat. So what you'll see out here at the gate, he's going to run a little out and up move. He's got the defender, if you look at his leverage here, is to Cade's outside shoulder. So just go down the hash mark there, and you'll notice that's kind of on his outside shoulder. So the defender's sort of telling Cade without telling him, you don't get to come outside here. I don't want to have you come outside. I'm blocking against this. I'm going to give the inside up to you, but I'm not letting you come outside. So Cade does a very nice job of even pressing this leverage further, forcing the defender to get even just a hair further wider to open that up a little bit more. And then when he breaks open right down through the middle of the, uh, of the field here on kind of a post at that point, it's wide open. Nice, just subtle, 
nice footwork to get into it. It's got a little, just a little, you know, kind of sets it up with his feet where he's going, gets him and then redirects it real quickly. As soon as he gets him to bite, he's, he's waiting with these first few steps for him to bite. That's, that's what he's waiting. Where's he going to bite? When's he going to, when am I going to get him out to just a little bit long enough to where I get that little extra step I'm looking for and I can cut him up inside. Nice job, kid. Good start. Up next, you get a little bit of his end around ability. This is kind of a fancy play style here as they're running a little of a read option in space and then have him coming back across. Nice, nice little move in the open field there. He's not as much of a juker guy. He just kind of does it with subtle change of direction, go one way, turn back on the other way. He's, he's not gonna, he's not gonna juke anybody out of their shoes, but he will break tackles like this on film where he's got guys in open space and they just don't even touch him for some reason. And they just he he will exploit poor angles to the ball carrier. Nice run. All right, on the next play here, what we have is sort of a soft corner route. You can barely see him in here in the screen here, but he is essentially going to come up here and then just sort of softly fade this to the corner of the end zone. I don't know if it's what the coaching staff has taught him in how to run this route, because normally you're going to have the guy press this like he's just going straight up the field on a go route and then cut it out to the corner, whereas he just sort of runs fast up the field to the corner. Um, it's not really a precisely run route necessarily, but what jumps out about this play is the hands, which are on display on his film footage as well. Solid hands, despite the fact he's got a real small catch radius, not the biggest hands in the world, but a nice ability here. One hand in this thing, defender hanging on him. Well, well done. But just to give you again, the idea on the, on the route, see him kind of just running the route and it's sort of just. It ain't super precise. It ain't horrible. It, it, it's part of why the defender's so close to him when the ball arrives, though, is because he the defender never is challenged on him just running the go route. The threat of that doesn't exist for the defender because he always knows, yeah, he's subtly moving over to that corner. It's a little thing. All right, here we've got South Dakota State in kind of a rare almost uh, 12 personnel type look. And at the top of your screen, you've got Cade. I guess it is a play that they've got in their playbook here because this is now the second time we've seen them run this, which is, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to call it a skinny fade. And that is he's going up the field like it's a go route, but he's just sort of fading towards the sideline here. And I'm not sure if the quarterback's trying to throw a back shoulder here or if it's just a poorly thrown ball and it's underthrown. But a great job by Cade to adjust to the ball in air get his hands under him at the right time, tracking, all that, all the defenders kind of falling all around him. Nice catch. Again, not running away from anybody, but the showing the ability of contested catch is nice because I think that he's not necessarily going to be awesome in getting separation when it's in that type of situation, especially, God forbid, you put him on the outside very often. But that's the thing that's nice to have as a pairing skill to that if you don't have the speed deep to burn people is at least, hey, if the ball's near me, I'm going to be competitive. I'm going to take it away from the defender. I'm going to be more feisty in that, that realm of things. This is a part of why, again, I've come into play of saying he's got that some of those Doug Baldwin-y type elements to his game as well. So this seems to be his trademark route that we've seen so far in this highlight package is whether they're lining him in the slot or in the outside, as we saw, that 12, first, 12 personnel They'll fade him out to that edge, and he runs the route well. Maybe the quarterback just throws it really well, but just gets right over the top. Love the late separation that he gets. Got a safety bearing down on him. I mean, at the point when that ball's in the air, you don't know that that safety's not going to arrive and hammer you. For all he knows here, he's about to be depleted and holds in there true, doesn't get phased. Not an easy catch either as he's got to kind of fall down. Nice job, kid. Seattle's got to implement that play into their playbook, though. Okay, so for here, we're going to get a little bit of just a swing route out to our guy in space. Just get him the ball. Let him work. Comes across the formation. You're going to see him do this in our new scheme. This is a St. Louis Ram-like wrinkle that you will see, I think, in the Seahawks' new scheme, bringing that receiver back across the formation post-snap. 
challenges defenders, especially in zone coverage. And what you notice here, he's got a little bit of a jump cut that he pulls on the guy there to kind of get him around. It's, it's, I guess you go, it's not really a full-on juke, but just again, subtle in his moves in the open field to create these space, to create the space, to create his yak. And it's not necessarily going to be as flashy as those guys that are the jukers and super cool spin moves, you know, all the great buttons on the on your PlayStation Xbox controller. But he gets it done. He's, he's going to, I think, create yak with some of these little moves that he has, his great balance. There's a reason they used him on end rounds as much as they did. And here again, you see it. Just he gets here he gets essentially horizontal to allow himself to get vertical and get his yards. So it makes this catch. The cornerback's kind of expecting him to just sort of fall into his arms out of bounds, as receivers will do when they're when they're weak and they're a little soft. I'm just gonna get a bounce. I got my eight yards, I got my catch, I'm good. Not him. Instead, he, he uses an opportunity to turn around and accelerate in the opposite direction. And you almost have to do this like right as you're catching the ball and go, now I'm going to do this. And you start to move that way and, the, and just it creates a couple extra yards of space. He ain't going to die easy. He's not looking to fall down. Here we got him on the end around again. Look very similar to the second play we saw. Just like the last one there, he always will break the first tackle out in open space. You don't have to block it all up for him in the bubble game or the end of the round. He will break at least one tackle for you. Block most of them, and you're going you're gonna to be looking good. This next play to me is a little bit about the fearlessness that we saw in the deep ball where the safety was bearing down on him, and he didn't care. He sold out for the catch, made the grab, didn't take a hit in that case, but easily could have. Similar situation here. This is going to be a bubble screen, and here's Cade in the slot. He's going to go out to the bubble screen, and it's going to be blocked up right here with this first guy on, on this man. So hat on a hat. But he doesn't know for sure that he's going to make this block cleanly, and he doesn't know for sure that this guy hasn't read the play and he isn't going to be bearing down off the snap, just sprinting towards him to lay him out. And the reason that this is important is because off the snap, you'd normally expect the throw to arrive right about here, if you can see on my cursor, for where the quarterback should put the ball. But instead, the quarterback gets a little aggressive in his ball placement, and he ends up putting the ball somewhere around right here. This kind of puts Kate in a situation where if you have a more fearful receiver or receiver unwilling to sort of sell out, as we saw earlier, they might drop this ball. They might get alligator arms. But instead with him, makes the catch, doesn't even bat an eye. Doesn't even bad nine. It's a little just subtle thing there where you go, well, oh, it's not obvious here. But look where the ball placement. See how that ball goes out in front of him like that? That's The ball shouldn't be that far out. It should be, again, you can see off the throw, the ball should be arriving right here with him where it basically lands right on that line for where his route's going. But it's going to end out right out here. And look at these two defenders. One of these two guys could just come bearing down and light him up. But he doesn't care. In the, in the great words of Rod Tidwell from Jerry Maguire, screw the defender, catch the ball. One thing that really stands out to me that Cade Johnson really excels at is his ability to change his pace in his route running. You'll see with him, and we'll see it probably more in his game film, that he's never going to show the defender the same speed, the same pace. He's going to change it up every single time. And here, he knows he's going to have a free release. We've got a lot of space between him and the defender. And what he's trying to essentially do is get the defender to bite. He wants you to bite the cheese on the move. Take that cheese, let the trap set, and I'm going to go right past you. And with here, it's not him needing to set up the move with five different head fakes and, and a stop and a go. Just him with the varying of the pace. Just vary the pace sometimes. You will, you'll, you'll throw the defender off. You'll cause them to panic. See, that it's, it's two skip moves. We'll do it, run it a couple times here, but it's just the two skip moves. ba da doom ba doom but da dum but dum Watch it again. You guys like my sound effects? It's two little skips. It, uh, super subtle stuff. N nothing that's going to wow people, but that's him. He's not a wow guy like Terry was. This is more of a subtle guy. Those two steps just, you can see, just kind of lulls the cornerback to sleep. And look at how much space he's got by the time he makes that grab. 
just lulls them to sleep, rocking the baby. And by the time you make your catch, there's easily three yards of space between you and the defender. And that's a defender not playing press. That's a defender with five, six yards off coverage of space. And he manages to eat the space up. Some receivers here, some slot receivers in this case, what they're going to do is they're just going to run as fast as they can and get right up into the defender's grill and then make their cut. And they're going to rely on that to, to be the way they get their separation. With him, he's the thinking man's receiver. So he varies the pace, gets the separation, big time play. Great job by Cade. Great route runners is not just about having 4-3 speed, being the quickest and the fastest. There's more to it than that. There's refinement. There's technique. There's approach. And if you can be good in those other elements, you don't necessarily have to be as explosive. All right, we got ourselves a little bit of a feel for Cade on his highlights. I think we know what he likes to do, what he's good at a little bit here. Now let's dive into a little bit of the senior bowl tape. This, of course, is going to have him pitted against former NFL caliber prospects. So it does provide a reasonably good test in that respect. Just one more time, I'd always like to mention with this type of tape, especially these type of reps, this is really does put the cornerbacks, and a lot of times they put safeties out here even more surprisingly so, uh, puts them in quite a bind. It's not easy to cover these guys. They have all this football field to work with here. The quarterback's got all the time he wants to throw the ball, so it, it just it does make it tough on them. All that being said, we can get a little bit of a feel for our guy here in what he's got to offer a little bit. And right out of the gate here, you're going to see a little bit of that uh, skinny fade that I was talking about as he kind of starts out from somewhat of a slot position here and then just fades into that spot. Doesn't get really any separations, struggles with contact initially here up the football field, but then those hands, that ability to make that catch in contested catch situations comes back up and shows its beautiful head once again. So he's going to bring that to play, I think, uh, time and time again. I think that's an element that's going to help him at the next level with some of his lack of, like I said, athleticism, explosiveness, speed, whatever you want to sort of nitpick in him. Here he does a, a little bit of that uh, shuffle release that he does. This is kind of similar a little bit to what we saw with Dwayne Eskridge, and you get a little bit of the difference of players here. Because with Dwayne Eskridge, we saw he liked to put the jab step. So he would just quicken everything up. It'd be a jab step to the inside release on slants, and he would create that separation all day with that. K doesn't have his type of speed or quickness, so he's got to use a little bit of a dancer's ability here to get open. So the shuffle release is just that he's going to shuffle to the outside shoulder of the defender, get him to bite a little bit, and then cut it back inside. Both ways can get you open. It's just a different sort of technique. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a better rep. And what we're going to get here is another one of K. Johnson's patented moves. We've already seen a little bit of a shuffle release back to the inside. We've seen him run a little bit of a skinny fade. And this is a little bit of a stop and start uh, route running where what he's doing here, I believe, and how he does it in the games is he sets these defenders up by sitting down in these soft zones throughout the course of a game. He just looks for where they're setting up, smartly reads the leverage, sits down, and gets a lot of easy completions that way. And over the course of a game, you'll frustrate defenders in this fashion because they're playing assignment correct. It's just that they're sort of getting out game called by the offensive coordinator. And so you'll have a defender as a game goes on looking to then bite on these slot receivers setting down in these soft zones. And specifically, I've seen this over the course of a game. I know what you're trying to do. I'm taking this away now. So what he's doing as a counter to that is I'm going to set down. Nope, nope. I'm not setting down in that zone. I'm going to keep going. This really challenges the defender's patience, and it also goes after the type of defenders that are going to tend to cover these guys in the slot, specifically when you get linebackers and safeties who you are now not only asking to stop and start direction, but you're asking them to flip their hips. And so it's a real tough play for a guy like that to cover in the slot. This is why I think he'll be so good in the slot in that realm. It's just that stop-start quickness it's not that purified type quickness that k the the tyler lock and doug baldwin kind of had but it still is effective and i watched him on game film we're going to see in a second get open with just this type of route 
So we saw in that last senior bowl rep that patented move that I was telling you we were going to get to see in his game film, and no sooner did I say that than we're going to get to see that. A little stop, by the defender in, back opened up. Beautiful little move. Beautiful little move. And this one really gets to put it on display because this isn't him just, you know, running with one guy in a whole field. He's got to deal with multiple defenders over here, and he's got to cause this guy to bite into his route to create the hole in the zone then for the quarterback to hit the play. So we're going to stop this here at one point so you guys can get a feel for this. But when we stop it right here, let's look at what we're looking at. We got a cover two look with the safeties deep. We got this lurking defender right here. Not really on anybody, just kind of waiting to take away uh, anything that's in his zone as well. So there's a lot of guys here in coverage at this point for our quarterback. It's not an easy read. So what he's got to do with his route is he's going to sit down like you would, making this defender think, oh, he's sitting down here in the open space in the zone. I'm going to drive on this. And the second he gets a feel for him driving, picks up, puts back down those feet, gets back to moving quickly, and gets wide open here in space. Well done. It's, it, there's not a lot of room here to operate. These two defenders do not give you a lot of room here to operate. If this guy doesn't buy in here, that window is really small for that quarterback to try to get that through. He's got to get him to bite down with his route, but he does so because it's such a good, well-run route. Okay, on this play, we've got a pretty good play design in general. This is just to attack this coverage that the defense is throwing at the offense. And specifically, I feel like they've got a cover three look across the board here with this safety being your deep safety and then your uh, corners having that responsibility to the deep end of the field first and foremost. So the offense attacks it with this route, and Cade in the slot here is just going to run a simple out route. But his job is essentially here to run that safety off, get him to buy into going deep so that things are then cleared out underneath. And it is a good play call as much as it's a good route. So as you can see here with 27, he's sort of lurking there, lurking there, and then they run under the route. So 27 gets run off, but a good run route by Cade, good hands, gives his just sits down in that zone. He finds those soft spots in the zone over and over again. All right, on this play, we again have our guy, Kay Johnson, operating in the slot. And I think that this is an interesting play to somewhat show off a little bit of, I think, a lack of his speed down the football field and then a little bit of a reduced catch radius for a guy his size with those 29-inch arms. You'll see here the quarterback kind of throws it up, lays it up there. He doesn't even have a chance at the ball. Now, certainly the quarterback overthrows this by, by a little bit, but this is where you're going to have to put the ball right on the guy. The 29-inch arms, the lack of jumping ability, the lack of speed with the ball in the air, this is the place where I do have a little bit of my concern with him as far as if this is going to hold him back at the next level to a degree. Just you pair those three things all together. It's one thing to have short arms. It's one thing to be a little bit slower maybe. It's one thing to not have a great jumping ability or contested catch ability but with this kind of throw here I feel like that quarterback probably felt like he had that a lot more on him than it really looked at the end of the day um, and again I think that's just going to be because of the guy's you know skill set that he's working with all right so we're going to look at some other footage here that northern Iowa tape against South Dakota State there just wasn't a lot of plays featuring our guy Cade and since he is playing mostly out of the slot you can't really tell a lot from just his releases because he's always going to have usually a free release so we're going to do a couple more cut-ups of plays here against North Dakota State and then we're going to probably wrap it up as I know we're getting into the 30-minute territory here on scouting video and that is a long scouting video but with guys like this, sometimes you got to get a little bit of an extra view on them just to get the full understanding and picture of the player they are. Now, on this particular play, you're going to see Cade run a little bit of that end-around game that he is so good at. It comes right back around the side, uses his vision to read this well, gets out around his blockers good, sets things up. It's not a big play. It's not a sensational play. He just knows what he's doing out in open space. This is part of what makes him a good kick returner, probably would make him a good punt returner as well. He's got a feel for where to go with the football, understanding angles, understanding how to take advantage of those angles. Um, not an ankle breaker, not a juker, but uh, just smart with the ball in his hands. So this is going to be the kind of rep that gets me enthused about Cade. As I was saying in our previous film, part of the reason we're watching new tape here is that he gets so many free releases operating out of the slot, and so you really can't tell how well he's going to do as, as well against press coverage. I know when he gets on the outside, he struggles with it a little bit, 
but how can he operate it within the inside, the slot? We saw the guy in Dwayne Eskridge, Seahawks second round pick. He's very good if you're going to press him. He's going to get separation. He's going to get release off the line. Now, he's got a little bit more physicality in his game than I think Kay Johnson does. But this is a great rep because it shows him fighting off the press coverage, getting into the slant route, and making the catch. That guy gets right up in his grill. He's got a safety bearing down. No problem for our guy. He just handles business. Great job here. I mean, this, this press comes right into his face at the top of the screen there. You see that just right up into it. It's, it's a solid press that he's dealing with. He fights right off of it. Doesn't let him slow him down. Just slides off of it. Gets to the inside on the slant. Love it. All right, so we saw him get pressed just a second ago and get off of it, make the catch. Here we see the press come up into the slot and give him a little bit more of a problem. Gets a little bit more of a struggle here. He's not able just to slide as easy off, kind of slows down. It's maybe a little bit on the edge of being a defensive hold there, just a little bit. But he's definitely struggling in this one with the press. And I think he's going to struggle in those moments when he does have guys come up and press him, especially a bigger defender like this. Just don't think he's going to get off him very easily. All right, on this play, I wanted to show just a little bit of his blocking ability, or I would say lack of blocking ability. Now, this isn't the biggest deal in the world because with slot receivers, you're not often going to have them doing a lot of blocking anyway. And when you do, there's probably not a lot of great slot receivers that are good blockers as well. So it's not a big uh, red mark against him to not be good in this realm of things. He's just not very tenacious, not all that willing to get in there and really put his body out there on it. He's just going to try to do the bare minimum and hope that gets it done, which is fine. It's not a big thing, but it is a thing nonetheless, and that is just not an element of his game. And an important part, too, because within this offense, we may be asking our wide receiver to do a lot more down blocking and that your blocking responsibilities in this offense are much more increased over previous Seahawks offenses, I believe. So this could be more of an issue now than it has been previously with our team. This is another route that I'm noticing with Cade that he runs pretty good. And that is that if he gets off coverage, and you'll see Cade's actually at the top of the screen, not in the slot, one of those rare moments where he is not in the slot. And when he gets off coverage like this, he does a very good job of eating up the space, getting out to the out route, and getting open. Um, just has a natural feel for how to run that route. He's able to sort of deceptively hide going into that route. He doesn't round it off. It's a nice cut to the outside. We saw that earlier on the uh, cover three play where they were running the one defender out of the zone with sort of a flood concept and then brought him underneath. It's a little bit of the same thing here. And there's just no flood concept to it, but he still runs the route really well, puts his foot in the dirt, gets out wide, nice target for his quarterback, makes the catch on a third and four. Ooh, showing a little feistiness there. A little feistiness from our guy after the catch here. Puts a little hand up in the face mask, huh? Yeah, get out of my face, sucker. <laughs> All right, on this play, we're going to finish it up here. Uh, part of the reason being is that I'm looking through this tape, and there's not a lot of tape of South Dakota State out and available out here on YouTube for us to watch. And then above and beyond that, South Dakota is not doing a really great job of really featuring Cade. You take this game here against North Dakota, he gets a couple of big-time catches to start out the first quarter, and then they kind of have just ignored him and gone away from him, really uh, dialed it in on the running game and tried to really develop that, which has been even more odder when you look at the scoreboard here and you're into the fourth quarter and you're down by seven points. You'd think you'd want to feature your best playmaker, but South Dakota is uh, playing a little bit weird in that respect. Now, on this play, you're going to see Cade again operating out of the slot. He's going to draw a pass interference penalty on a deep ball. It's a little bit of a ticky-tack, in my opinion, on this play. I, I don't know if I fully am in agreement that this was a defensive holding call. Um, I think what they're getting him on is we'll see him off the line of scrimmage here as I believe the defender kind of held him up a little bit as he was getting that separation. And if that's the case, we can't see by the camera angle, but if that's the case, then it was a good call and a, a great job by Cade to cause that penalty to be caused because he was going to get separation and get deep down the field, which is why the defender maybe got a little bit grabby. What you do see on this play, though, again, is that he does not get a lot of separation in his route running, running deep. And then he does not have that huge catch radius to go up there and take the ball away out of the air. It doesn't even really make much of an attempt on this throw. We saw that on a previous throw here in this game. I think that's just going to be kind of an element of his game where when he makes his catches, he's going to kind of need to be wide open. He can make some contested catches here and there, but it's not going to be part and parcel a huge part of his game. Still, this is a really exciting player to watch. Let him operate from the slot, and he should still be able to be really effective from that role. We saw him run all the different kind of routes you need our slot guy to run here in some of this game footage. I'd like to get a little bit more, but 
it's some of the deficiency we work with in utilizing YouTube here for some of this game film. When looking at slot wide receivers, I think one of the most important quantifiable attributes that they can possess is short area burst, quickness. It helps to be fast, but it's more reliant for those guys on the outside to be fast. For the inside guys, you've got to be able to get off that line of scrimmage quick. You've got to create that fast separation. And that's something that I was looking towards with Cade when he was originally picked up to see if he had. And the two guys that I specifically looked to sort of compare him against were the two guys who've had recent success operating out of that slot for our Seattle Seahawks, being Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett. And with both of those two guys, I went back and looked at their two scores and their short area burst, specifically if they had the short shuttle drills, look at their 10-yard splits in the first 40, and then match that up to what Cade Johnson's done recently with his pro day. Because with Cade, I can acknowledge the fact he doesn't have the speed, but if he has that short area quickness, and if he had elite short area quickness, then you could more easily prescribe him or show him to have an outlook where he could be one of the better slot receivers in the NFL if he's able to kind of break through. Unfortunately, when I was looking at these numbers and matching it up, he just doesn't match up in that short area quickness to what Lockett and Baldwin brought to the game. Now with Tyler Lockett, you had a guy that was a legit 4-4 guy who was also very quick in that 10-yard split, also very fast out the gate, while also quick and fast. Whereas with Doug Baldwin, he was more along the lines of what you had in Kay Johnson, being a guy about 5'10", who ran about a 4 5 40. But what Doug had was that quick, 10-yard split. He actually had a faster 10-yard split than Tyler Lockett, who actually ran a faster 40. K. Johnson just doesn't have that. He's about 20 fifths of one hundredths of a second off of their times, which means that he's just going to be kind of average in that realm of things, which to me, when you look at the tape and you look at the other metrics he has and you kind of take it all into account, I think that is going to limit a little bit of his upside. I don't think we're ever going to see a guy that we're going to be looking at and saying, that's the best slot wide receiver in the entire NFL. But a guy that can get on the field as a slot wide receiver and be productive in that role, a guy that's better than, let's say, a guy that the Seattle Seahawks drafted a couple of years ago who really hasn't been able to get on the field, being a guy like John Ursula, I think that this kid can be better than that. So he's got at least some upside to his game. It's just about slotting it in the right place. I do expect him to make this team. I think at the end of the day, Seattle's going to keep DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Tamarian Terry, Fre uh, Swain, and then I think this kid will make it as well as the fifth wide receiver. So he will make it. It'll be interesting to see who's going to be the kick returner. This kid can do it well. Eskridge can do it good. Even Trey Brown, the kid, the cornerback they draft out of Oklahoma, is a very good kick returner. But I do expect him to get on the field next year. He's going to give you some catches throughout. You can you can count on him having some solid hands. When you throw the ball, he is going to catch it, and he's going to find a way to get open despite having some limitations as far as his quickness and speed goes. This guy is just a football player. And on some guys, you just have to look through that lens in order to appreciate what they are and what they can be. I got a lot of excitement for this kid. I think he can be pretty good on the next level. Don't see star talent here, but just see a guy who could be a very, very solid pro for our Seattle Seahawks. And not just into the long-term future, but into the next season. My name is Brandon. This is Seahawks Scouting. Thank you for watching, and don't you ever forget, never forget, Go Hawks! Thank you.